welcome to our Bible study on the book of Mark. Uh, this is in coordination with our Sunday morning sermon series, so I would encourage you to join us here at Harbor Light Baptist Church at 1030 a.m. every Sunday as we study through the book of Mark. I hope these weekly Bible studies will be an encouragement and a help to you as you seek to understand the gospel story from Mark's perspective. And I uh, would encourage you not only to view these online, but also to look for opportunity uh, to meet in person with other believers to discuss the book of Mark. Uh, we meet each Wednesday evening here at Harbor Light Baptist Church, and we're also going to have a Wednesday evening meeting in the Holland area. If uh, either one of those um, in-person opportunities works for you, if you'd be interested, leave us a comment or send us a message and we can get you coordinated with those groups. Or if you'd say, I'd like to set up an in-person group sometime during the week, maybe a morning or another evening, uh, please let me know. would love to coordinate a group with you in a different area or a different time as well. Uh, these, these videos will be the content for our Wednesday evening Bible study and prayer time here at Harbor Light Baptist Church. And so if this teaching has been an encouragement to you and you'd like to join us in person, please uh, feel free to do so. We'd love to have you. And not only a time of Bible study, but also a time of fellowship, friendship, and a time of prayer together. Well, I want to jump right in tonight to our series on Mark. Again, we started with an introduction on Sunday morning, so if you're interested in that, please view our uh, last Sunday's uh, sermon, an introduction to the book of Mark. And uh, today we're going to look at Mark's announcement of the gospel. I'm going to try to keep these videos relatively short, and so I'll encourage you to read the passages um, outside of our video time. I won't spend time reading the passages here on this video. So I would encourage you right now to go ahead and pause the video and uh, take some time to read Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. All right, you got it? Well, let's go ahead and think through what Mark is uh, telling us here in the introduction to his gospel or his good news. As I just mentioned, the word gospel means good news or joyful tidings. Now, this is a word that was in common usage in Mark's day. That was used for a number of different things, number of different purposes, including great victories or announcing things like the birthday of an emperor. And uh, Mark, however, does not use this word in the plural as it was used in his day to announce many different things. He only uses this to announce one form of glad tidings, one singular piece of good news. There is something that is ultimate or significant about this news that Mark is going to tell us. And it's no wonder because this news focuses on Jesus and what is that title that Mark gives him at the beginning of his gospel? Jesus, the Son of God. And so Mark has introduced us to the content of his gospel. He is going to tell us this good news or joyful tidings, and it's all going to be about Jesus, who he is, what he says, and what he does. Now, Mark continues with this idea of unique good news. This is not just any type of news. This is a unique good news. And Mark uses another word to highlight how amazing this joyful saying really is. That's that word that you see uh, in the beginning of his gospel, beginning. By starting with this word beginning, Mark brings to mind the monumental idea of creation. He equates the arrival of Jesus Christ with God's creation of the earth and all the things that are in the earth. Is that an appropriate parallel? Is Jesus really that big of a deal? This one from Nazareth, which was just a little uh, backwards town, backwater town in Galilee. Is it appropriate to say Jesus is as important as creation? Well, as Mark goes on, he shows us that Jesus really is the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament promises. God's prophets, including Moses, Isaiah, and Malachi, had prophesied that there would be a voice crying in the wilderness. If you want to look any of these up, you can look in Isaiah 40, in the first three or so verses, uh, verses 1 through 5 maybe there, and Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 
You can also find this in the book of Exodus, in Exodus chapter 23. The same idea. Uh, Moses, Isaiah, and Malachi had prophesied that there would be a voice crying in the wilderness. And that all of God's people were to listen that voice and to follow the one whom the voice prophesied about. Now, John the Baptist is identified as that voice. And what does he do when he draws this large crowd that came even from the prestigious city of Jerusalem? Well, you see, he doesn't try to impress them with himself, but instead insists that there's one coming who is greater and much greater than he is. John says, I'm not even worthy to do the lowest, most menial task of a slave, which was to uh, take the shoes off someone and to wash their feet. He says, there's somebody greater than me, and he instructs the people to turn or repent from their sin and ready themselves for the fulfillment of God's plan. Now, John, in his ministry, people that were ready for the announcement of God's, God's plan, God's kingdom, uh, they would be baptized with the baptism of John. He baptized them in the Jordan River. Now, as John is uh, saying there's one coming who is greater than, than he is, who would be that one? Who would be the fulfillment of all of God's plan and prophecies? Well, as we see here in the first chapter in Mark, it is none other than Jesus. And the arrival of Jesus is good news because we've been in need and been awaiting the arrival of God's plan. From the days of Moses to Isaiah and to Malachi, we have longed for one who would set things right. Now, what happens at this baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to John to be baptized? What is different about this baptism that didn't happen at any other of John's baptisms? God announces this good news by the heavens being torn open, the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus like a dove from heaven, and God himself speaking and saying, this is my beloved son. Wow, I can't imagine what that scene would have looked like, but certainly uh, verifying John's message and ministry that this one was certainly greater than John the Baptist. Truly, what John had said about another more powerful one was coming true. Jesus is greater than John and greater than any other man or woman, greater than any prophet before or since. The heavens have opened and God himself is appearing in Jesus of Nazareth. Wow, what a scene there at that baptism. Now you would think with a baptism like that in an introduction to his ministry in such a phenomenal way that um, something amazing would follow that kind of fanfare, wouldn't you? What do you think would happen? Maybe some sort of earthly crown would be given to Jesus, some sort of position. Or maybe he would lead some sort of political or military movement that would wrest power from the Romans who were in charge of Judea, who had Judea under their thumb in those days. We would probably expect something like that. But Mark subverts our expectation. Mark shows us that God has a different plan. Jesus does no such thing. In fact, what does Jesus do? He is led by the Spirit. We'll see that as a theme throughout the book of Mark. He follows God's leading. He follows God's plan. What is God's plan for him right now? Well, to go into the wilderness and to be tempted by the adversary of God, the adversary of all of God's people, Satan. God's son is tempted by God's adversary. Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days, and uh, this uh, is a sign of completion, of testing, he triumphs over Satan. He triumphs over the wild beast as he follows God's plan and the angels minister to him. But he leaves us wondering, if God's plan is so different than what my plan would be from, from our expert expectations, what will this good news that Mark has said is, is on the scene now with Christ? It's here, the good news. What will this good news really look like? How else will this good news subvert our expectation? If the Spirit asks this of Jesus, what will he ask of us if we follow Jesus? 
And so then we come in verses 14 and 15 to really the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Mark says that Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Again, that word gospel is singular. There aren't two different types of good news here in the story that Mark gives us. There's one. And Jesus' work and ministry and God's kingdom are equated. If we want to be a part of what God is doing, if we want to be united to him and his purposes, we must be united to Jesus. To follow God means to follow God's son, Jesus. And so how should we respond to Jesus' message? Well, Jesus gives it to us very plainly there in verses 14 and 15. He announces the kingdom of God. He says it is at hand, and he says to repent and believe this good news of Jesus, God's son. Now, we mentioned earlier that to repent means to turn. Jesus is calling us to turn from our own way, from the ordinary ways of this world, and turn to him believing his message. But the question remains, if God's plan involves things like prophets wearing camel's hair and lonely temptations by Satan in the wilderness, will we trust his message and his ways? Will we follow Jesus the way he calls us to? Now next week, I hope to show you from this same passage that Jesus is a trustworthy witness. He is worthy of of our following. He calls to him disciples, including calling to you and to me. And Mark shows us in this very passage that he is a trustworthy one to follow. I want you to think on that this week. Maybe look for some signs there in the verses that we covered already uh, with this um, um, weekly study and see if you can find some reasons that Mark gives that Jesus is a trustworthy witness and one to follow. Well, if you have any questions, please leave some comments here on the video. Um, send us a message. We'd love to discuss uh, the study further with you. Uh, if this teaching is of interest to you, I want you to join one of those weekly fellowships. It'll be a blessing and encouragement to you. If you'd like to get together personally with me and discuss the passage, I would love to do that with you. And I'd love to see you tuning in each week for our study in the book of Mark. Uh, remember, we're also studying Mark on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. as part of our morning service. Uh, that'll be a, a different message and a supplement, um, these two things supplementing each other uh, week by week. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, and please let me know if there's any way that I can pray with and for you in any way Harbor Light Baptist Church and its members can minister to you. God bless you, and good afternoon.